the, the hands 25 year the track record it's remarkable what has been accomplished in terms of projects and you know we can count the number of houses that we've done and they've been you know well over a hundred of really difficult homes we can count how many new homeowners have been in, in the building right? how much investment we've leveraged in, in Orange and it's probably over a hundred million dollars when, when it's all said and done I think that's where you start in terms of thinking of that but I think it's I think it's much more than that, you know. I think that HANDS um, has demonstrated that it's possible to make change. So when HANDS first started back in 1986, Pat brought together a bunch of community leaders and clergy, you know, because the neighborhoods in Orange were spiraling downward. Again, we were in this cycle of disinvestment, and they wanted to, you know, bring together the resources to see what they can do to strengthen those neighborhoods and, and bring them back to life. HANDS is a community response to uh, a neighborhood that's been deteriorating and we decided that we, the community, were going to get together, fix up housing and stabilize the neighborhood. Patrick Morrissey started HANDS one year ago to get a grip on stopping eroding neighborhoods. If we could redevelop the worst problem properties, the ones that were on people's minds, the ones that were really pivotal, then we could begin to change momentum in the neighborhoods. Pat told a story of how this idyllic little block had been made completely paralyzed and terrifying by the existence of a crack house across the street. And Hans got the house, fixed it up, and unleashed all the potential of that block. At that moment, I decided I, I wanted to come back wanted to be part of this, this place. What really creates neighborhoods is, you know, really the actions and decisions of lots of people, hundreds if not thousands of people. Hans has always thought, if you were really going to do this, you had to think in a broader way. And you really had to think about engagement and collaboration across the whole spectrum of what is a community, what is a neighborhood everybody, getting everybody involved to think about the future. But another important element was, you know, trying to bring in first-time home buyers. Oh, I think about 20 years ago, I went to a community meeting and that's how I heard about HANDS. So I actually, as a community person, joined the board and I was on the board for quite a few years and I was part of the Home Buyers Club. I became a first time home buyer through the HANDS program. When I was at a beauty supply store and I came out on my car, there was a flyer said HANDS Incorporated First Time Home Buyer. This was like back in 2001. I um, graduated and I, um, HANDS had a house that was on a dead end block of Merle Court. And I couldn't see how the house would turn out at first. So I, you know, I came back the next day and I envisioned how the house would look. And I said, you know what? I want the house. And every day I, on my lunch, I would drive up there just to see this house and how it was progressing. And I got to know the construction workers, you know, and I was like, okay, you know, you have to make sure this is done. You see these cracks here? This has to be repaired, you know, because I'm going to take pride in this house when I get it. He said, oh, are you going to be the homeowner? I said, I am the homeowner of this house. And we went through the bank. I went through TD Bank and I purchased a house. I knew um, the people from HANDS, their attorney, and my attorney, I knew they had my best interest at heart when I bought this house. And I actually saw this unit being built. And um, it was amazing to watch it. And every time I looked from outside, I'm like, wow, it's the cutest little dollhouse. You know, you always dream of home ownership, but you're living life and, and, and raising your kids. And so it's something that I always said I wanted to do, but you know, the money never just came right. And I was home. Um, with the flu when I got the phone call from Pat Marcy telling me there was the opportunity for home ownership for me was I interested and that's really how it, how it got started. I've been living here uh, for about 14 years. It is a hands home and I love, love, love my house. So in 2001 I guess it was you know we convened 600 residents and community leaders and stakeholders around the state to, to talk about the future of the Valley. So we began to form this whole concept of the Valley Arts District. That's a great neighborhood.
neighborhood. Um, it's very funky. Um, we live across the street from a steel fabrication plant and um, next door to a parking lot for a place that delivers heating oil. One of the things that I think that HANS did that was great was to protect the jobs that were here. A lot of urban renewal just would push that out and just make it an entirely residential area, but they didn't. It's still a largely working class neighborhood, um, but there are a lot of artists um, of all kinds, and it's a very mutually supportive community. Nobody has much, but what we have, we share. My husband and I live in an apartment that was renovated by hands, and apart from being nicer and quieter than our last apartment, it's given me a luxury I haven't had in years, which is a separate room for my art. This is where Stetson's hats were made in this area. So there's a lot of low-cost housing and factory kind of buildings, and they kind of go together. Um, I had been seeking out the people at Hands, and then when they started developing this building on South Jefferson Street, you know, there was a spot for me. I felt that there was uh, a chance for a woodworker to have a studio here. Kind of started off in Tribeca in the late 70s, I, I kind of like knew where it was going to happen. It can only go one way here in the Orange Valley area. It's kind of a natural to be here, I guess. This is the Orange Inc. program, which is a youth arts program. And it, it is a free program for area youth teenagers come and make art. This was my hangout spot for after school. Like I would do my homework and I was uh, I was practicing art last year. I come here, practice my technique because it gives me somewhere to focus rather than being at home and nobody's around to help me. Or I can't learn stuff because my computer isn't fast enough to learn Photoshop. So this, it lets me expand my creativity very much. So this Luna stage Mozzie Dogs and the, and the police substation were three rickety old buildings that they figured out how to put together to make space for a theater or a restaurant and a police station. Yeah, Pat has that idea. And, you know, when he walked into my store, it was set up pretty much the same. All the pictures and the colors, you know, and Pat knew he saw something in the store and he saw something in me. And, you know, for, for the time and effort that that he invested in me, I'd always be grateful to Pat for that. I mean, you know, I don't think anybody else besides my parents had that much, uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? <laughs> Confidence in me, thank you. Around the time we were about to declare victory on the vacant property issue, um, for the first time there was an uptick in vacant properties. And of course we didn't know it at the time, but it was the, the start of the foreclosure crisis. And that's where we get hands got into the Operation Neighborhood Recovery Project. Um, and we began this process of looking to acquire 47 non-performing distressed mortgages, not the properties. And you know, hands one of the things that it, it has done besides its work in Orange is really led community development and, and reinventing new ideas. You know, it was a it was a long struggle, but we ended up acquiring the, the mortgages. We ended up you know, putting together this somewhat innovative financing package. It was the first time it was done by a nonprofit in the country. Um, but all of those properties, 47 of them, you know, have now are on path to, to redevelopment. They already started small projects that I've seen that have taken off and they look beautiful, like the restaurant that they opened up um, over there on Valley. Um, I thought that was really, really good, you know, because people always look for eatery where they can hang out with their family. Hands had a, a tremendous effect, direct effect to the valley. And, you know, I think everybody's happy for it, too. It was one of my birthdays. Pat gave me the, uh, the blueprint. And he put it in a frame and said, happy birthday. And, you know, sometimes I look at what I've done and I look at that and I'm like, wow. We've come a long ways, you know? So that's how I look at Orange. It's a great city, it has great potential, and it's gonna to continue to keep growing.
from the outside you're looking in, it may look like it's a difficult task to come in and make changes, but it's, it's just like a, a, like a mountain. You have to chisel away at it, you know, and that's what hands are doing. They're bringing in, they're taking on smaller projects and, and, you know, and they're rehabbing them, redeveloping them. So you see the change. So 10 years from now, we will see a revitalized orange and it's partially because of hands. I have a feeling that in 25 years, hands will be a very different organization because I think it's on the verge of, of accomplishing its goal of creating you know, the model urban village of the 21st century. So it will always have to be a guardian of the neighborhoods, but I, I do believe that uh, in 25 years, you know, we're gonna be writing a story about the great renaissance of Orange.